Hello and welcome to Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. Well, I'm, I'm back from the San Antonio Cocktail Conference. Yes. From which I learned really nothing. But <laughs> oh, except oh, because you already know everything. If you if you like uh, whiskey. Uh, the Texans really like to make wh whiskey. So there's oh. all sorts of brands, and they did most of the, I, I would think at least 50% of the alcohol was Texan whiskey. Texan whiskey. Whiskey's big now. It's Yeah, it's done in the foothills. It's whiskey bars everywhere. They already have in Austin and around Dripping Springs, they do gin and, uh, uh, well, they do vodka and gin. Uh, Tito's vodka is no. from uh, around Austin. Okay, that's uh, organic vodka, isn't it? It is not organic, no? but it's made out of corn, so it's gluten-free. Yeah, but it's not GMO-free. I don't know. I can't spell. Okay. Oh, well, you should try that. Oh, it's, but are, speaking of free. So, so anyway. What's Babs so and W? So Babs W, I started to think, well, I haven't gone through my vintage cocktail book in a while. Oh. So I started reading it. And in the B's is a drink called the Barbara West Cocktail. Okay. Uh, Shorthand is Babs W. Okay. And, and Babs, it, Barb is something my wife is called Babs, and her maiden name is W, so it's a drink sort of named after her, theoretically. By way of. And it was her birthday this month. Oh. So nice. there you go. Anyway, but, uh, and also the drink that came after it, the uh, uh, Barnum uh, was right cocktail was virtually similar to this one oh. with one variation, which makes it very interesting. So you know how I'm fond of variants? Well, we're always yeah. mixing. Yeah, we're mixing things. things. So this was right there, and so we have to do it. Uh, pretty much it's uh, two ounces of gin, one ounce of the other thing. In this case, the dry sack sherry is the Babs W. Half an ounce of... Uh, Fresh squeezed, Fresh squeezed lemon. lemon. So we'll do the, notice this, actually this is Broker's Gin. It's got this cute little hat. That's, uh, a, that's a bowler hat. Isn't and uh, this is, where, where is this camera? This is in uh, Specs and in uh, Total Wines. And it's kind of similar, but not as junipery as the uh, Beef Eater. Okay. So it's a good everything uh, vodka. Gin. Gin, thank you. Good thing you're here to correct all my word mishaps. Now, well, my, you, you gave blood today, so. Uh, I did. You know, if you're a little uh, woozy, uh, let's. Did uh, I? To be expected. Did I cut myself well, when you. I was cutting the lemon? So there you go, two ounces of gin, uh, one ounce of dry, well, any kind of dry uh, sherry, according to the writer of the book. So an ounce mm. of that. So big, and this particular gin is, gin is uh, uh, named uh, for you, Dry Sack. <laughs> no, that's the Sherry. Oh. But I had a girlfriend named Sherry, and oh, that's what she mm -hmm. calls. Um, <laughs> but nobody heard that you one. Stay with her long nobody enough. Nobody heard that you one. What'd you do with it? Oh, and then Angostura Bitters, um, one small dash. Oh, so, so I gotta go run. You have to. I gotta go run. Do you, you have one. to shake that up? I would. <laughs> okay. You never know. I mean, do you know what is in bitters? I have no idea. Exactly. Something bitter. You bitter want, roots, right? You don't want to just get the top. Three? One. One. Good. Oh. you, you got to be careful with ooh, bitters. Oh, yeah. Because that's pretty pungent stuff. So, Angostura is the most common bitters. And um, let's see. And we shake, I, shake, shake? I think we shake, shake, shake. Uh, the second most common is supposedly Peychaud's bitters, unless oh. you do orange bitters now. And you don't see that much around here. Peychaud's bitters. You get it if you see it because it's made in the famous Pendennis. Speaking oh. of which, Pendennis. Pendennis. We, had we a Pendennis. did the Pendennis. We had one here recently. Yes, and that's made with apricot brandy. And that, well, well, this is peach brandy, but you can't uh, find apricot brandy. We can't find apricot know-how. We tried. We really tried. So when I was in San Antonio, uh, other than the fact that the uh, cocktail conference had enough cocktails for everybody, sure. we went out to a little dive. Well, actually. Uh, these underground places that didn't have names and you have to look for it. One was called 1919, which is a pre-prohibition bar. 1919 is the year of prohibition. The, the Volstead Act came into, into play. And uh, the, the the Uber driver or the Lyft driver couldn't find it. He said, it, it's got to be around. Sure, it's around or somewhere. So I asked a few people, oh, it's, it's at the bottom of this silver building. And you go, it's dark out, so you can't tell <laughs> silver from white. So they, uh, they make it that way on purpose. And then, so you, oh so trendy. then you go in, it, 
And it's kind of amazing. It is the entire bottom of the building. The bar was 40 feet long, uh -huh. and it was loaded with people. So they, they just they, knew they did some good drinks, and then we ordered a pendennis for my sister who was there. Yes, and they. And uh, uh, I had to tell them what was in it. Uh -huh. you, and, love, you like doing that. Too. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you always have to bring uh, the show's bitters. Because it's in the pandemic and very oh. few places have it. You know, it. you should travel with bitters. Just take it with you. I, I do. Just in case. Yeah, I keep it in my pocket less than two ounces, otherwise uh -huh. they stop you at the gate. Oh, that's true. Well, well you, you can check it through, though. It's not a problem. Uh, let's see. That's mine, and uh, I think that's yours. So you're going a little light because you're going gave light. blood today. Going light. Although I think uh, <laughs> that's a double drink. Let's mm. see. So this is the Babs W, Barb West. You didn't say girly drink. You're looking. It's not. The bitters put it over the edge from being wow. sweet at all. It's not sweet at all. Actually. No, it's not. It wants to be, but it's not. Hmm. It's a little like the Pegu Club, which is pretty much just gin and Cointreau. And it's the lemon that really makes it bitter, or not bitter. Sour. Tart. Tart. Yeah. Yes. And then they got the bitters on top of it. So it's you nowhere know being, near being sweet. Okay, it's surprising when you drink it, right? Because it's not a usual flavor. True. God, that's but really you, weird. You, you can get used to it, though. I think so. You can. I think so. It's very savory. I think it's yeah. food-like because of the sherry. It's got fruit in it. Sherry's made with fruit. <laughs> well, yeah, it's yeah. wine. And, Here you go. Well, we got to get rid of these. So is, well, gin has juniper, but this gin not so much. Well, it's not like you're eating the juniper. Yeah. It's sort Just of a homeopathic, there's a homeopathic <laughs> amount of juniper so that uh, our allergies uh, are abated. Let me ask you, Michael, have you been to the movies lately? Uh, since like 1954? In the theater. No, like in the last Oh, yes. Few, I go to the theater occasionally. Yes. Have you ever gone on Saturdays? Shabbos? Yeah, Saturday. Or Saturday nights. Yes. Why? Oh. oh, because are you talking about Tell Short 12? I went there. Yes. Did to, you to reserve see, your seats? Uh, you do when you get there. Yeah. You have to at all the theaters. I, now. Yeah, you have I to know, it's crazy. But we didn't realize that uh, if you go on Saturday, the tickets are $9.50. Yeah, but if you go Wednesday, they're $5. No, so Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday is $5 all day. Well, we went on Saturday because that's the day we could go. Because you're such a big spender. Nine dollars. They up it on Saturday for the weekend. Well, you know, people who are... We had no idea. If you're restricted by your time because you're out making money all week long, including yeah. the nights, do you make money during the night? I well, don't want to get personal Well, here. it depends, you know. You wouldn't have to go on Saturday. You could choose any day of the week. It's not like your schedule is booked, except for this coming Tuesday, I, hadn't been I know. To, I hadn't been to the movies on Saturday for a long time. Now you know why. We were just shocked that it's $9.50. Then you order a soft drink, and it's $4 for the small one. You ordered a soft drink? Alice had to have a Dr. Pepper to help with her headache. And, uh, you know, she's my, kind of migranal. Migranal? You, you get 35 she's cents your worth of soda, and they charge you five $4 for it. Um, you know. Are you giving us new news here? Because no, everybody knows that a $10 bag of popcorn is not reasonable. And of if not. you go and get uh, your, your Whoppers or your Juby Fruities or whatever, they're not worth three bucks for a box that you can get Raising in a store. No, so I, I mean, the I economics never buy of anything movies, at the well, concession stand. And they're even, you know what? They raise the prices of the food on Saturday. Did you know that? <laughs> they you probably, probably do. Did. I castigated Alice for getting a Dr. Pepper. I don't know why anybody goes and gets food except you really, really desperate. It's junk food. You know, and they don't, you can't even get a cup of coffee. They don't have coffee. You know why? That is something I would get. Because they don't like to give out the saucers. And, and then the little piece of cr the cream and, and little tubes of sugar. They yes. just give you, have a Dr. Pepper. You got your sugar, you got your sweetness, and well, you, know, uh, real, you got your caffeine. The Rio Grande Theater sells sodas, they sell beer, and they sell wine, but they do not sell coffee. You know why? because that puts them in a whole different health health department level, and they don't want to even fool with that. Wait, what don't they sell? Coffee, hot coffee. Oh, right, that's food. That's, yeah, that's fresh food. They can sell popcorn for some reason, but if you see, have hot coffee now. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Do you think, you know, there's a new coffee shop down on uh, Main Street? 
And, and uh, yeah, you yeah. think they need a license to sell coffee? Yes. They can only sell in-state coffee beans. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. Would that were true? Yes. There's now, a lot of in-state coffee makers. Now, did you know, I, I was reading an article in the paper recently that, that says, New Mexico is ranked 49th in child poverty. And you believe everything you read. Well, 49th. Weren't you educated here? 49th? Or do they mean the second? The worst. Second the second we, worst. highest. The second highest percentage To be 49th, that's pretty good. Only one I only know. one state is better than us. Yes. What they, I think what they meant was we're ranked we're the second in child poverty. Well, we're the worst in child wealth. We have the, the poorest children because they we can't do. get good jobs. At six years old, they're schlepping around selling lemonade, but it, it's... In my day, you know, I was a child slave for Nike f shoes. And your fingers were worn to their nub because you know, there you are sewing them. I remember back in the 90s, uh, Paul Newman came, came down here. He had lunch at Chopi's and he wanted to look at the chili fields where the chili was being picked for his brand of salsa. And he wanted to make sure that children were not being used as labor. He, so they hid them? He personally they hid, yeah, them. hid them. They yeah. hid them. Newman's coming. Yeah. Well, and he was into food. So yeah. I mean, he had his own food. So he made his own salsa. He's got quite a line of food. Salsa. And, uh, this well, guy's got his, salad dressing. His daughter got does. everything. Pop, I like his popcorn. You should buy some and bring it with you to the movie theater. That's <laughs> what you're doing. In. Yeah. Now. So what's that? Speaking oh. about New Mexico. Uh, yeah. You know how New 49th Mexico. 49th in child poverty. We're, is we're second. We're second. We're ranked uh, tops and everything bad and uh, in the bottom of everything good. And when it comes to congenital syphilis, we're ranked number eight. You know, I thought that was gone, but so it's good to know that we're bringing it back, you know, and it's fresh. They used to put, yeah, some when a baby's syphilis. born, they would immediately put a silver solution in their eyes uh, in case the mother had syphilis and, the, okay. and that's how the baby gets it. Yeah. You get it in the birth canal on the way out. Only if your mother has it. And what was the... Uh... They haven't been testing the mothers. They're now starting to test the mothers for syphilis. They have to test them when they're pregnant and they have to test them on the day well, that the baby's born really? in case they get it be between I guess pe people are more friendly these days. And uh, you never know when you're gonna pick something like that up and there they're picking up a baby. So, so New Mexico is, is number eight in the country in congenital syphilis. Is that including newborns? Good well, question, congenital huh? means babies born with syphilis. Uh, oh, is that what it means? Yes. Actually, it doesn't mean in your genitals? Congenital. With genitals? Con Is that what it means? Well, that's where they get it. I guess I should have read that article, but I figured I didn't have it, so I have to worry. As it didn't apply to you? No. Neither does the pecan harvest. harvest. Well, the pecan harvest, finally, we're number one in something. We were number one last year. And last year. You know, Georgia has been kicking our ass for years. Right. Well, because of uh, hurricanes and things yeah, like that. Because of their bad fortune, we're we get good one. fortune. Yeah, we're tops in, in pecan harvest this oh, year. Oh, if only Again. more states would have congenital syphilis. We'd we'd be further down the line. Yeah, so uh, pecans, you know, they're good for you. I would assume. They're very good for you. Yes. And I put them on French toast and pancakes. And put it on French toast? Oh, yeah. Do you heat them? Yeah. So well, crisp them up a little? First, I make the French toast, and I set it aside, and then I do the bacon and eggs. Uh, that, and then that. when it's time for the French toast, after I've eaten the eggs and stuff, I pour the syrup on them, I put the pecans on them. Do you grind them a little bit? No, I just break them up. You know what I don't like? Putting French, putting pecans on fish. They think it's great oh, because pecan we sell pecan-encrusted fish. You know, fish is a nice soft thing. If you wanted a nice crunchy thing, you'd get like a Snickers bar or something, not not fish. Well, if they blacken it, it's crispy. The skin is crispy. Mm, I like crispy. Yeah, it's not black and black and that's a Jamaican rub of blackened. Yeah, or just pepper. But uh, pepper. Pecan-encrusted doesn't bother. Well, that's because from here you want to support the pecan industry. I frequently don't or eat the skin. pecan, <laughs> depending. Well, we have some people here who listen to this show, and they're in New York, and it's called pecan. Yeah, the yeah. pecans. Pecans. It's supposed to be pecan. So for like peanuts, pecans. Pecan. Punuts. Pecan. Punuts. Punuts. Pecan. Punuts. <laughs> so, so Jim, if you're listening, we're respecting uh, your use of the word. <laughs> Okay, now, Pecan. the New Mexico we Legislature, got a minute. Yeah, the New Mexico to do Legislature this? is into? in session now. Mm. They, this week they went in, into sesh. Into sesh. And there's some big, big, big things they're considering, like uh, legal laws. They actually, pots. they considered that last year too, and they considered not doing it. 
But this year, this year we have I a think Democratic we got a governor. Chance. Yes. And you know, you think the Republicans say, well, they don't want the government messing in our lives. That's what. Then, the, then why don't they want pot to be legal? For it to be illegal means the government is messing in our lives. Because God doesn't want us to have pot. God wants us to have pot because it grows. That's it true. Freeze, it is right? a, one of the fastest growing weeds. What is that a picture of? The weed growing that's, place. That's the Mary Airbnb. Roundhouse. Yes. Where they are they breeding? We're making these decisions right now. Free college is another thing that they're pondering. Uh, you know, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Free education for I mean, all. We have free education from K, pre-K through 12. 12. And when I lived in California, college was free in a state college. College was almost it's, free it's in now. New York when I was there, but at City College, City College used to be free. Yeah. Why not make four this, more years free? And, and if you're going to go to graduate school by that time, you'll find a way to get it paid for. Well, you need the money to do it. We have the money, apparently. We do, gas that. and oil. Yeah, yes, we can do so it. far, as long as we have gas and oil, right. we're good. And, the and pretty soon we'll have solar energy, and that's another place to tax as much as... And the film industry is coming in big time. Yes. And we have the red flag gun bill that they're going to be considering. Oh, that, you really That means it. taking guns away from people who are insane, <laughs> uh, at least temporarily. If you think they might go out and start shooting up schools and... Could I have your gun? And malls. Can I get your gun? Uh, you can take the gun away legally. You know, in, I think the question is... To take your I car it, away. Of course, I think it's a good idea because I'm not a gun advocate. I think if you feel insecure, then you should take pills. Yeah. Well, that's not going to bounce bullets off your chest from other guys with guns. <laughs> Who's those guys? Insecure guys. So don't hang around with insecure guys. Oh, I'm not a gun gonna, nut. I'm a gun owner, but I'm not a gun nut, you know. I have one because I'm allowed to have You're one. You're just a pecan. I think we got to take a break. Take a break. Now, and we can argue about this while we're finishing these drinks. Let's do that. Yes. We'll be right back after these words. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Oh, station man. us on channel 98 keep watching because we have so much in store for you we want to grow together your channel local and real if we want to improve America's health care system let's start by improving the health of Americans Despite the best doctors, hospitals, and medical advancements, Americans are not as healthy as they should be. We spend too much on treatment and not enough on wellness and prevention. We need a system based on primary care. When patients have a medical home and a long-term relationship with a doctor, the result is a longer, healthier life and reduced medical costs for everyone. Let's make America a place where health is primary. Hi, I'm Ray Bamberg with Here on Earth. I would like to invite you for a free hearing evaluation to our office. We've been here in Southern New Mexico for 34 years helping people hear better. We have a great crowd in the audience. You hear those guys? Yeah, Thanks, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. We're back to Double Talk right here on the Los Cruces channel. And we're making drink number two. And this one is called the uh, Barnum Was Right Cocktail. Oh, not Babs. Not bad. That was the Babs uh, W. Barnum, as in P.T. Barnum? <laughs> P.T. Barnum. The, there's a sucker, what? So a sucker born every minute. And this sucker is trying out his drink. Well, you um, know the Barnum and Bailey Circus went out of business. They did. They, they, they people, weren't paying their elephants enough. Well, people just got tired of uh, cruelty to animals. 
And business was down. And uh, you could get everything on YouTube. Now, what do you mean? Oh, so it's virtually similar. We have a half an ounce of uh, lemon, freshly squeezed. Once again, two ounces of the old Broker's Gin. And where is that made? It is England. And Broker's are because in London, that's where you have a lot of Broker's. This actually has uh, is 50, it's 94% proof, which is like 47% alcohol. Not 94% proof, 94 proof. 94 proof. Uh, it's so called, it's, 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 it's referred to as a London Dry. London gin. Dry. Everybody thinks everything's London Dry, but there it's are many not. different types of... The locally made gins are not London Dry. Well, there's a style, but there's now an American gin uh, category. We had drinks the other day over at the local uh, distillery. Didn't yes, we? yes we did, place? with uh, Dry Point. Dry, dry Point Distillers, <laughs> yes. And they make their own gin mm. and vodka. And, and uh, whiskey. Oh, we had an interesting incident. Which we that. haven't had the... No, I was still there. Oh, okay. Remember, we ordered martinis. We, oh, yeah. We, I challenged them. I said, you know, you guys can't make a martini. And they said, oh, yes, we can. Turned and out you were right. They I, couldn't. Well, but, but they could. Actually, what happened was... Well, we wanted, they could. They could put a... Vermouth isn't made in, in uh, Las Cruces. Or New Mexico. Or New Mexico. So, but they could use vermouth if they don't use that much. So they can, remember, they said they can wet the... You don't need much. They wet the... Um, uh, your the, your rocks. They wet your rocks with it, and then it's okay. Well, and, first they gave us a vodka martini by mistake. Well, we yeah we they gave us martinis and we tasted them and we both liked them a lot. I liked mine a lot. And then and then I had like a second taste, and she goes, "Oh wait, you guys ordered gin. Wait, let, let me take those back and give you gin." Are you yeah. gonna have it back in just a minute? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You knocked yours off, didn't you? So we, uh, most of it. Yes. So we almost got a free uh, martini out of that one. Well, still, what actually happened was, I liked the, the uh, vodka martini better. It was really? A good. Yeah, didn't you, you? That means you like their vodka better than their gin. I, which is what I've been saying. Okay. Without having potato chips. If you have potato chips, their gin is really very good. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? I don't know why. They should serve potato chips. They should have potato you chips. You told them there. that, didn't you? I did. No. Yeah. Or just put a potato chip as a garnish. They're not garnish. going to admit that their gin needs anything to help it be better. It doesn't help it. Maybe that's a taste that has to be evoked. Mm. Maybe it's just you. <laughs> well, you alter cocker you? It depends on how many people like their gin. Depends on what they sell most of. They can easily determine that. Most of their drinks are fruit-based. Because yeah, because that's that's what's available in Las in uh, New Mexico. That way, yeah, there's no restrictions on fruity ingredients. You know what I think would be good? In Just bars. smelling this one, you know, because it's the peach. This peach is great. Peach mm. nuts. I can smell it from here. You know, there's a big antiques treasures show this weekend. Oh yes, tell us some news. That yeah, that's going on at the Farm and Ranch Heritage Museum Saturday and Sunday. Uh, you want to see antiques? Go that's there. Also, you can get your antiques praised, I believe. Mm. So if you have stuff you don't know what it's worth, they almost they had an antiques roadshow a couple a long time ago in El Paso. We brought some antiques down. Oh well, that that's the TV show. Yes. This is not that. No, but they but it was like a TV show. Oh. I mean, it was like a antiques appraisal show. Well, this is antiques treasure where you show. Can buy it. They want people to come in and buy these things. Um, antique dealers. An old are coffee be there. grinder. Antique dealers will be there, and. Uh, like if, you, if you want to see some antiques, that's the place to go. Now, that's going on Saturday from 9 to 5 and Sunday from 10 to 4 at the farm. You now, it's $5 to get in. I think you As get, it always is. I think you get your antiques assessed. I and once you're inside the farm and ranch, you can go see all the other exhibits, too, once you're in there. Which are also antiques. <laughs> well, yes, pretty much. What's that? I have no idea what he said. So I knew something. Well, here, cheers. Cheers. Let me do this. this one smells much more. Hmm. Pretty much, it's the pendennis. It is. I kind of pendennis. You yeah. know, you know, you know me. I don't like the sweetie drinks. So I do prefer this one to the previous one. Yes, but if you put some more of the uh, tri sack, it might be the, your perfect balance. You put you put lemon juice in, right? I did. You lemon juice with the sweetness of the. Uh, Peach uh, schnapps balances, balances better, it right out. so it might be a little better than pendant. And then you put bitters in too, right? I did. You did. Uh, Works. The, here you go. There goes our show. 
We just lost our monitor. Is our show still on? <laughs> really? We can't tell. It says game. So, so that's going. Also, opening today downtown at the Museum of Art, at, which is connected to the, Look in the camera Museum of Nature yeah. and History, Yes. is the Dinosaur Discoveries. <laughs> there you go. And Dinosaur Discoveries. Uh, it's a traveling show. It's going to be with us for several weeks. Uh, so you don't want to miss that. You like dinosaurs. Kids love dinosaurs. And I know you do. I don't. Well, I do. I am one. I just, uh... Yeah, you, al yeah. you alter cocker, you. <laughs> You're um, really dragging this Yiddish out here. It's my new he favorite. He learns one Yiddish word. It's my and new favorite term. He's <laughs> schmaltzing it up all over the place. I don't need that kind of source. Surus. <laughs> I'll give you Surus. Uh, okay. I'll give you a cups in the head. <laughs> So, Donator's Discovery, uh, Discoveries at the Museum of Art. Look at that. Don't they feed them? Yeah. They're skin and bones. Then there's no skin. And they're on the South Beach diet, obviously. Mm. Now, also, coming up Sunday is the Bridal Showcase. Oh, really? This is how you're asking me to the get married? Well, oh. yeah. put a ring Sunday, on Sunday, huh? <laughs> now, I was reading about this in the paper. There was a little blurb. There was two blurbs about it in, in the Sun News. Uh, the Bridal Showcase, Sunday. And uh, uh, yeah. they didn't say where it was. Well, and there was no number to call to find out where it is. Well, no email, no website to find out where it is. I think you can make a case for it being in some sort of horse stable because it's bridal. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, and that's in the bridal showcase. Path. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm assuming it might be at the uh, convention center, but we have no way of knowing, folks. Sounds big enough to be at the convention center. People are still getting married by the Boatload. The, you know, June is the big month for people to get That's married. That's true. Now's the time to start Now's planning. Now's the time to get ready. Yes. Oh, and we better run through this next stuff. Now, we, we have, to, we, we have now, to say goodbye to some people. Who, who, who you can't say goodbye to. Well, Buck Henry. Because they're dead. Uh, yeah. Buck Henry. We lost Buck Henry. He was 89 years old. actor and director. You know, he's the co-director of Heaven Can Wait. He wrote The Graduate. He, he wrote Catch-22. Day of the Dolphin. Oh, no, the... Uh, What's up, Doc? Get Smart. Get Smart. He wrote yes. a lot of those. Uh, the Owl of Pussycat. Terry Jones. Terry Jones was, from Monty uh, Python, Monty Python. Flying Circle. He died. He was Buck Henry was 89. Terry Jones is uh, 77. Jim Lehrer, who also had a great uh, new Jim show. Lehrer. There yep. he is. He was 85. We also lo Co founder lost, of the McNeil Lehrer Report. We lost Joan Glickler, who actually was from our town oh. and uh, produced for like two years a literary journal that uh, told about uh, people who were oh. artists here. Oh, and also, uh, my film series that I created and in uh, created. He created it. And which I'm introducing and curating at the, at the uh, Rio Grande Theater, uh, the uh, series of obscure and lesser seen films. Okay. We're starting it off this month with Hammett. This directed Tuesday. Directed by Vim Wenders, produced by Francis Ford Coppola. Or for those of you who read English, Wim Wenders. Yeah. January 28th, 7 o'clock, Rio Grande Theater, it's only $5. Cheap. You can't beat that. And Black Box this weekend, right now, yeah. tonight. You know, I skipped jury duty somehow. I'll get to that next week. Jury duty? You skipped it? You yeah. Get, I don't know is how that why that knock is on the door? <laughs> no, you got a few seconds. No, no never mind jury, jury duty. duty. I want to talk about The Killing Games. Okay, uh, that's coming that's up. That's a play that's opening uh, at the Black Box Theater this weekend. It's you, one of your favorite uh, playwrights as well as mine. Eugene Ionesco. Ionesco. It's kind Ion? of theater Ion? absurd. Ionesco. Also, we must mention uh, John Baldessari, who's a famous artist. Famous artist from California, where, you know, was your home for 10 years. He died. 13. Also, today is Robert Burns Day. His uh, birthday was yes. uh, not too long ago because he was born in 1759. Drink named after him is actually pretty much a Rob Roy. Here's the Robbie. With uh, Benedictine and or Dram Bowie. So enjoy that and uh, see you next week if our schedules uh, work out. What's the name of this drink again, Michael? This last one is the Barnum Woods Right. Barnum Woods Right. As opposed to the virtual bad W. Name of this show. Happy birthday, Barbara. Yes. <laughs> and my sister, Sandra. Oh. Oh.